Praise God. Good morning, everyone. God bless you all. We're happy to be here in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. He has been so good to us, and we're just so thankful that we just want to worship as much as we can, I guess. So um, I'm going to ask everybody who's standing behind, just come up front and have a seat. Yeah. Uriel and everybody who's there. I don't think there's more people coming in at this time, so I want you to be on your feet, and we'll be um, reading a portion in John chapter 10, verse 10. John 10, 10. If you don't have a Bible, um, look for someone who has, and if you have one, your neighbor doesn't, share the, the word of God. Amen. John 10, 10. It's very short, and we're not going to be... I'm not going to be holding you guys a lot because I have a problem when I am preaching in English. This is actually my first time. Translating is one thing, but preaching in English because my thought process is in Spanish completely. So I have to translate myself and then tell you guys, and sometimes it doesn't go as planned. But I'll do my best, and we will try to give you guys what the Lord has already given me. And it's John 10.10. 10. Everybody has it? Amen? John 10.10. 10. It says the word of God. We'll read it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they might have life, and that they may have it m more abundantly. We'll read it again and, and just read it with me. John 10.10. 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. We're going to pray. Father God, we come before your presence asking you, Father, for your word, for your revelation to us, for Whatever you have to tell us this morning, that's what we would like to hear from you today. So please let us be our hearts and our minds open so we can receive the word that you already have so for us this morning. We thank you, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. We may have a seat. So we will just talk about something that just caught my attention and it's very interesting. And um, John is talking about how Jesus is the good shepherd, right? And how he takes care of us and how wonderful he is to us and all those things. But then we go and um, as, I, as you read that portion, everything seems fine. Everything seems good. And as we know, the Bible, it's so far the only book that does not have any mistakes, any errors as far as... Um, uh, grammar and punctuations and all those things. So especially when something makes sense, right? It has to make sense. The Bible makes sense. But then I find three things in this verse we just read. First thing is to kill, I mean to steal, and then is to kill and then to destroy. So how is it possible to destroy someone that's already dead? And I just I stopped myself right there, and I, and I said, okay, this is, you know, it doesn't make sense to me right now. But then again, I think the Bible, it makes sense. I believe it. I know it's true, everything that's in there. So let's just pay attention to this. Anybody knows what steal means? What is it? When you take something, something from someone that doesn't belong to you, Correct. That's stealing. Very good job. So we are very clear on the concept of stealing. If I have a wallet and, and then David wants it and he doesn't ask me for permission, and he's just, oh, I like it, I'll take it. That's stealing. David, do not steal my purse. It's too big. <laughs> Everyone will notice. So that's stealing, right? And then to kill, anyone knows what to kill means. Or what it is. What is it? When someone has a gun and shoots at you. But what happens after that? Do you still come back to life and 
keep playing around or what happens? That's the end of you, right? That's the end of you. So we're very familiar with what to steal and to kill means. And um, I went to the, um, in the dictionary and it says, to kill is to cause the death of a person or an animal or any living thing. That's to kill. Now, after killing someone, that's the end, right? There is no more to it. We go, we bury that person, we cry all we want, we eat tamales and drink um, coffee, and that's the end of it. That's the end. But then it comes back and says to destroy. Does somebody know what to destroy means? What is it? To throw a bomb and you make everything go dust, right? There used to be a house there, and then Uriel threw a bomb, and now it's just ashes, nothing else. To ruin. See what the dictionary says, to reduce an object to useless fragments, um, useless form or remains, as by rending, burning, or dissolving. So, yeah, what Uriel was saying, that's exactly what it means. To destroy is to make you go dust. You know, it's dust. What happens in a fire? To uh, when, when something um, caught fire. By the way, the building where I work caught fire the other day. <laughs> Thankfully, the building is so big that it just caught fire on one end. And my area where I work, it wasn't affected. So thank God that I can still go to work. And, you know, it, everything is okay. I wanted some days of vacation, but that's okay. Continue to go to work. So after it, the, and I was thinking about this, how come the, the thief will steal you and, and then will kill you and then will destroy you? What's up with that? Once you're dead, you're gone. So first, the first thing that came to my mind, the devil is an expert to steal our joy, isn't he? You have this joy in your soul and you're so happy. You used to wake up and go so happily to school every morning to see your, your peers, your friends, and have a good time at school and church or your friend's house. But then as lives and as time progresses, you go and things are not as exciting as they used to be and people are not as interesting as they used to be and video games are not as fun as they used to be and my marriage is not as good as it used to be. And then we find ourselves with no joy. We, do, we cannot enjoy. We, we come to realize, I'm doing this. I'm going places. I'm doing stuff. But I'm not, I don't have a joy. There is a verse that the Bible says, um, the joy of my salvation. Just when you think about how you're going to be, be saved, that should be enough to make you, you know, go crazy in joy because you won't die. You just live forever. But then the next thing is to kill. The devil wants to kill your dreams. He wants to make sure that you are not dreaming. He wants to make sure that you are done, that you are just a walking dead. How many of you have seen the show A Walking Dead? Raise your hands if you have. I have. Yeah, probably a little can tell. So the walking deads are basically zombies. How many knows how, what zombie, zombies are? Basically, you are dead, but you, you keep walking. Many of us, that's how we feel at our young age or at our old age. And we feel like a walking dead. I'm not enjoying things, first of all. Secondly, I have no dreams. I have no goals. What for? Something hurt me so much that I just don't care anymore. And I'm just walking and going to church and going to work and going to school because I have to. It's almost like an automatic thing remotely. Um, one time I was doing things so like um, on a schedule and, and so such a, in a, such a routine that I got used to doing things. And I remember I was like nine or eight years old and I took my backpack and I went to school. And when I got to school, um, you know, the, the seats when, where you sit at school, right? And I just saw it in my mind. I was going to church for some reason. You know what I did? I put my backpack aside, and I was about to bend on my knees to pray at school. That's how I was just 
automatically doing things. You know, I wasn't realizing what I was doing. And sometimes that's what happened to us. Last week, I just saw a video that it was so funny to me because this guy was um, ironing his shirt with a with a hot iron right and then his phone rings and he and you know the thing he had in his hand was the iron he goes hello and he burned his face he thought he had the phone in his hand he didn't so that's how we feel sometimes we're dead we don't we don't taste things we don't taste the the, the goodness of the of our lives we don't taste the goodness of being christians we don't taste the goodness of being married or having a job or being healthy we're just dead. I don't feel like my so Some days I tell Patricia, I'm like, pa- Patty, I feel lost. Let me just go back to bed, fall asleep, and wake up again and see if we start all over again. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. Sometimes you just can't find yourself. And, and, and you don't taste and you don't cry. You don't even cry. It, it's, it's just horrible. That's to be dead. The devil wants to steal your joy. He wants to kill your dreams. And then, after you're dead, he wants to make you ashes. He wants to destroy you completely. And how is he going to do that? Once he kills you, right? You have no dreams. You have no aspirations. You have nothing. See, God created you with a purpose. He created you specifically, and he gave you this peace of mind, and he gave you this thought of processing that you are not like anyone else. You look at people, and I see Brian. I see Brian, how different he is from, from um, Alex. I see Alex, how different it, it is from, from David. And David from Patty, Patty something else. Like that. that's just something else right there. But see how different we are. And it's amazing to think that the Lord created all of us. We're, we're just not the same reproduced in, in you know, in serious. No, we, we are just unique individuals. And then what's the purpose of that? What's the purpose of making one so happy and making the other one so quiet and making the other one so serious and making the other one so joyful? Because the Lord wants you to have and leave behind you a legacy. Whatever you do, whatever you do. I do not agree with preachers that will preach that you can only serve God through a pulpit or through, um, you know, being a pastor or just by being a, a missionary. Just by, The Lord has given us so many things, and I am who I am thanks to him. So, he wants to kill your legacy. So anything good, anything powerful that you were meant to do, he wants to just make it ashes. How is he going to do that? He will destroy you first. He will let you think that you're worthless. He will let you think that you, that you can't do anything. Me, why me? And he will just push you so much to go with the current, to go with everybody else. Because let me tell you, the people who come, who come back and leave a legacy are not the ones who are just running with everybody else. It's always the people who go against the current. Everybody else is going that way. Oh, look, why is he walking that this way? Everybody's supposed to be that way, but why is he walking against us? And then people start noticing something is wrong with that kid. Something is wrong with you, child. You don't think like me. Why is that? And then, um, but that's what the devil wants you to do, just to lose yourself and to think, no, you're you're not meant to do anything different. You're just any regular person. You just wake up, eat, go to sleep, go to school, back to sleep, nothing else. There's nothing special about you. Just go with the flow. Just go with it. Don't even worry about it. That's the way he will extinct you and your memory and all those precious things that the Lord has given you. I want somebody to read Matthew 10, 28. Matthew 10, 10, 28 has something very special and powerful that I want us to just take a look at it for a moment. Yes. but rather fear him. Can you tell me on him, what, what kind of capitalization do we have there? 
is a capital H. Do we know that when we're talking about God, we use capital letters, right? So I've been reading that verse my whole life and thinking, oh, I have to fear the devil because he can put me in, in hell. No. Guess what? This morning, I just went to the original verse in Hebrew. And, and here, listen what it says. Do not fear those who, call, who can kill the body only, but can not damage your psyche. Your psyche is your, your spirit, your core, your thoughts, your heart. You should fear only God can destroy the soul and body in hell. Oh, my goodness. So you're telling me that God can put me in hell? Oh, no. And I thought, whoa, whoa. So it's not even me. It's not even the devil. It's not even the things that happen to me that will put me in hell. It's God. Wait a minute. But then I have a chance. Because David said once, it's better for me after I've sinned, after I've, I've made mistakes and I deserve a punishment. Guess what he said? I prefer to fall into the hands of the Lord because he will be merciful to me. I do not want to fall into my enemy's hands. I do not want to fall into the devil's or my own hands because sometimes we are so unfair. We don't, we don't give ourselves enough credit. We are so judgmental and we punish ourselves for something we did, for something we thought, for something we didn't do. But God, see, when you come to him, things are different. So do not fear yourself. Do not fear the devil. Your destiny is not in his hands. It's not even in your hands. It's in God's hands. So what's that telling me? It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter where I go. My destiny is always in his hands. And he's the only one who can put me in hell. And how is that going to happen? The word will judge you. Who's the word? God. So if you don't go by the law of God, if you don't go by his word, if you don't go by, by his commandments, that's when then he'll put you in hell. But as long as you go by his word and, and as long as you go to his hands and as long as you've, if you made a mistake and, and something happened in your life, but you keep coming to him and, and, and tell him, God, I, I messed up. But here I am in your hands. That's all that matters. What does 2 Corinthians 4, 8 says? I want somebody to read that to me. And you can tell me, well, that's impossible because we're not perfect. This life is so messed up that it's got us all messed up. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. We might be getting pressures from everywhere. We are. As, as a woman, we are. As, as women, we are. As, as youth, as men, as husbands, or as wives, as kids, we are. We are getting pressures from everywhere and every angle. And that's how the devil will destroy you. Remember the bomb that Uriel said? That that's how you destroy things? That's the bomb that we're talking about. The devil will not make a huge kaboom to make you go away. No. It'll go little by little by little, starting with your thoughts, starting with the pressures around you, making you feel things, making you believe things, making you go places you don't even want to go. And then you, you wake up and say, well, what am I doing here? This is not even me. But the Bible is telling us it doesn't matter where you are in life. It doesn't matter how pressed you're being. It doesn't matter what you do. Your destiny is in his hands. There is one man that's a living proof that about destiny being in God's hands. Well, most people in the Bible, but I just found this man, Job, he was exceptionally there was something special. If someone can read Job um, chapter 2, verse 6. And this is the last one that we will be reading. We're almost finishing. I just want you to take this thought and just think about it today. Job chapter 2, verse 6. The 
Behold, he is in your hands, but spare his life. The Lord gave the devil permission to mess with his body, to mess with everything he had around him. But one thing he said, spare his life. Our destiny is in God's hands. I don't know the, re- the, the things that you're going through. I don't know the, the processes and the thought processes that you are having at this time in your life, being a kid, being a teenager, being an adult. I, I don't know what it is. I just know my struggles. I just know my surroundings. But I know that everybody else's is different. I would just invite you this morning to let God, do not let the enemy steal your joy. Do not let the enemy kill your dreams. Do not let him destroy you in front of your face. The one thing that you can leave behind you after you're dead is your legacy. If you have a dream, if you have something special that the Lord has meant for you to have it, just continue to grow that and 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 continue to because after you're gone after we're dead that's where you're leaving behind your family whatever the lord has put you in your hands just go ahead and let let him guide you let him decide your future we'll be on our feet we'll be praying and i just want you to close your eyes at this moment we just have a small prayer we'll ask the lord there's anything in my life right now that's destroying my dreams if it's anything that i'm doing or or i'm allowing the devil to do to destroy and to kill and to steal my joy lord take it away i don't need to be just one of millions i i don't need to be part of millions and millions of people walking to the same hall to fall into the same place I need to be one of a kind, the one of a kind that you created. That's the one I need to be. Do not let him take you away. Do not let him steal your dreams and steal your joy. That is the worst thing that can happen. Because once you have no joy, once you have no taste in the things that you do, into what you do it for, that's almost the end. But the Lord... He has our hearts. He has our destinies. Do not think for a second that your mistakes will dictate where you go. That's not the case. It doesn't matter what you've done. It matters what he has done for us. And he, he's loving. He's caring for us. He's waiting for us to turn to him and let him guide our future. We thank you, Father, for your presence. We thank you, Father, for your joy. We thank you for your dreams we thank you for the future you have provided us help us be the light help us be lord the kids that you want us to be the sons and daughters and and fathers and mothers and 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 wives that you want us to be we thank you father god for everything